Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. We thank you for being with us on another Bible study night as we're in the book of Revelation still, the 16th chapter. And, and that 16th chapter is one of the more longer chapters in the book of Revelation. And there's, there's so much it's, that's in there. It is so rich. There's so much to teach on and to talk about and to expound upon. And so we welcome you on tonight being with us, and we trust and pray that you're still doing the possible, and God will do the impossible. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So get out your Bibles, if you will. If you have a Bible in book form, get out your iPads, your Androids, whatever devices that you may have, and go with us right into the Word of God. And again, encourage someone else. Share it with someone else. Uh, if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please subscribe to it and let us hear your comments. We welcome your comments, whatever they may be. Praise God. We welcome them. And so we are so glad you're with us on tonight. So just go and scoot up a little bit. Uh, ask the Lord to anoint your ears with his sap that hearing you can hear what the Spirit is saying because I believe the Spirit has some things to say unto us on tonight. Uh, this 16th chapter, of course, we know it deals with the, uh, the, the final judgment. It's, 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 it's where God's judgment commences, uh, verses uh, 1 through 9, as well as the, where it concludes, verses 10 through 21. Praise God. It's, it's going to be such as the world has never seen before. And so the, the vile judgments are being poured out. And if you recall, we left off around about the seventh or eighth verse. So we just back up a little bit and we'll read the seventh verse. And he says, I heard another out of the altar say, and, and that really should have been translated that I heard the altar say, in other words, referring to those who have been murdered by the Antichrist for not taking the mark of the beast for not taking his mark on their right hand or their forehead. And of course, there are many who are going to be martyred and murdered as a result of that uh, for not taking that, that mark. And it says, even so the Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. And, and what God is doing, his judgment is being poured out. And everything is going to be basically contained to that geographical location. Many believers tend to think that the Antichrist is going to have world domination. He's not. His, his goal is to have world domination, but he will not have world domination. Okay, I want to say that again. His goal is to have world domination, but he will not have world domination. And it says, and, and I want to read verse 7 again. And I heard another out of the altar say, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. Everything that God does is true and righteous. He's a righteous God. His judgments are righteous. Scripture tells us that. And so uh, one of the things that you're going to see is God's, when God's judgment is being poured out, he is exacting his vengeance against the Antichrist, against those who have taken the mark of the Antichrist, whether it's on their forehead or their right hand. And then the, the next verse, look at the eighth verse, which is, deals with the fourth vial. And it says, and the fourth angel poured out, listen, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. And so what this fourth angel is going to do, it's going to have an effect on the sun. Are you hearing me? It's going to have an effect on the sun. And again, I have to reemphasize this is again. This is going to be confined, or should I say contained, to that geographical location, the old Roman Empire, if you will. And it says, listen, it says, and the power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Hear that. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. You know, the book of Revelation is the only book uh, in the world that gives us a blueprint for the future. I want to say that again. The book of Revelation is the only book that gives us a blueprint for the future. And so with this vow, this fourth vow being pour, poured out, it's, it's just going to excavate the problems that are already going on. Because, see, if you go back, keep in mind on, on that, that, that first vow, you know, that was poured out. Notice there, there's going to be sores. There's going to be boils upon the people. Notice that, that, that in that next vow, there's going to be a, a sea of blood that, that, 
The blood, the water will turn to blood. And remember what I said on last week. If you notice, some of these things are somewhat in contrast to what happened in the Old Testament during Moses' time. Because you keep in mind, the Pharaoh was a type, if you will, of the Antichrist. I want to say that again. Pharaoh was a type of the Antichrist. And, and, and in the book of Revelation, when we, when we get here, you, we see what that there's such a contrast to some of those events and things that are going to take place. But in the book of Revelation, I said this before, it's going to be like its own steroids. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me on tonight? And so as we, as we read on, there's going to be, listen, there's going to be a shortage of water. The water is going to turn to blood. Listen, men are going to be scorched, listen, with fire. Listen, listen at this. These are things that's going to literally take place and that's going to literally happen. Yet for some, they find it hard to believe that these things are going to really happen. But God is going to be exacting his judgment upon the Antichrist, upon those who have taken the mark. Verse 9, and men were scorched with great heat. My God. And bl listen, and blaspheme the name of God, which has power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. Let me read that again. And men were what? Scorched with great heat. And listen, they continued even though being scorched with great heat, and, and when, you, when you look at the previous vows that were poured out, and all of these things are being excavated, and all of these things are taking place, listen, they still continue to blaspheme the name of God, which has power. What does the scripture say? What does John say? Which has power over these plagues. And they continue to blaspheme his name. And look at, look at, look at the next portion in that verse. And they repented not to give him glory. So that tells you a whole lot about the hearts of men. They repented not to give him glory. And see, repentance has to come from the heart. Repentance has to come from the heart, which, 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 which stems from faith in Christ and what he did. And so, in, in essence, they're saying, listen, we don't believe in him. We're going to continue to blaspheme it. And with all of these judgments that are taking place and what's really happening, their hearts are being hardened even the more. And listen, even in the time that we're presently in now, guess what? It's pretty much the same way. People's hearts are becoming hardened to the gospel of Jesus Christ. People's hearts are becoming hardened to Christ. It really is, because if their hearts were not becoming hardened, they would not continue to blaspheme and to do the things that they're doing. Hear me on tonight. My God, my God, my God. And, and the, 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 the false prophet is going to be incapable of doing anything. And if you remember that, if you just back up just a little bit, look at the Revelations 13 and 13. And I'm going to read that in your hearing. My God. Revelation 13 and 13. And listen at this. It says, and he, this is referring to the false prophet, okay? And he does great wonders or signs so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And so this is literally going to be happening. This is, this is no trick, okay? But listen, he's going to be incapable of doing anything when God's on the move. When the vows are being poured out, he is going to be incapable of doing anything. Are you hearing me? And, and keep in mind, when you go back to the Old Testament and in Moses' day, what was it that the, the magicians and the astrologers of Pharaoh tried to do? They tried to imitate. And that's what Satan is. He's, he's, he's an imitator. He's an, he, not an originator. He's an imitator. And he tries to duplicate the very things in which God does. Are you hearing me? And they repented not to give him glory. Wow. 
Very seldom do miracles bring people to repentance. I want to say that again. Very seldom do miracles. Thank God for miracles, but very seldom do they bring people to repentance. Repentance has to come from the heart. It has to start with the heart. Are you hearing me? And then let's look at verse 10. And it says, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. And this is, this is letting us know in this verse that coverage area of all of this that's taking place. Notice, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, which pr primarily is going to refer to Jerusalem, okay, uh, which will be the religious headquarters of the Antichrist. Are you hearing me? And his kingdom was full of what? Darkness. And his kingdom was full of darkness. That seems a little familiar, doesn't it? Go with me then to Exodus chapter 10. Exodus chapter 10. And let's read verses 21 and 22. My, my, my. Glory to God. Uh, my, my, my heart weeps because people are not taking God seriously. I'm going to say it again. My heart weeps because people are not taking God seriously. There is a God in heaven, whether you want to believe it or not. There is a God in heaven. There is a God who sits high and looks low. There is a God who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. There is a God who is the resurrection and the life. There is a God. There he is. Open your eyes and look around. He exists. He's real. He's not a figment of your imagination. He is real. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. Exodus chapter 10. Let's look at verses 21 and 22. My God. Listen to this. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. Wow. Wow. It's not literally that God hardened his heart. Pharaoh hardened his own heart. You see, because if you keep rejecting light, light will be withdrawn. And when light is withdrawn from you, then your heart becomes hardened and hardened and hardened and hardened and hardened. Let's, let's read that verse again. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. Look at verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out your hand towards heaven that there may be what? Darkness over the land of Egypt. Even darkness which, listen at this, which may be felt. Wow. Not only darkness, but being able to feel the darkness. Have you ever been around people? who are living in darkness, and you can feel the very darkness that's upon them and on them. You can feel the very darkness that is upon them and on them. Are you hearing me? You see, you that are walking in light, you can sense darkness, and you can pick up darkness if you're walking in the Spirit, if you're sensitive and tender to the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. You can recognize darkness. Are you hearing me? Listen, and the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness, listen, which may be felt. My God. Now let's go back to the 16th chapter of the book of Revelation. Notice verse 10 again. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom, and his kingdom was full of darkness. And his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnaw their tongues for pain. Because keep in mind, you got the boils going on, there's a water shortage, they're being scorched with heat, are you hearing me? And yet they continue to blaspheme God. If you, in this present day that we're in now, in this dispensation that we're in now, look what is going on. And, 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 and like I said, some of this is a, li listen, the time in which we're living in now is somewhat of a prelude, if you will, to what's going to come on a far greater scale. 
In other words, what this world, the world is experiencing right now is nothing to be compared to what's going to come. There, there, there is no comparison, none whatsoever. My God, hallelujah. And they gnawed their tongues for pain, which, and that's referring to the boils that were taking place over in verse number two of this chapter. Listen, in verse 11, and blaspheme, they continue to blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. And all, listen, all of that could have been avoided. All they had to do was not take the mark of the beast. All they had to do was not give him allegiance. Are you hearing me? Listen, and blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. In other words, they're blaming God for their situation. And even, even, even in the time that we're living in now, there are those, there are pockets of people wanting to blame believers for their situation and wanting to blame God for their situation even now. Are you hearing me? And they blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. But, but finish reading the latter part of that. And it says, and repented not of their deeds. Mm, 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 mm. It shows you the corruption of one's heart. It shows you the hardness of one's heart. With all of the fiercest judgments that are taking place, my God, they fail to affect their attitude, their spirit, and their conduct. They still not repenting of their deeds. There is no repenting. They are not repenting of their deeds. My God. And all of this could have been avoided if not taken the mark of the beast. Because look at chapter 14 and verse number 10. Just, just back up two chapters. Look at the 14th chapter in verse number 10. Listen to what it says. Hear this. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture in the cup of his indignation. And listen, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. Could have been avoided. And so many people, even today, even now, they give no thought about where they're going to spend eternity. And see, the, the problem with man is that he feels, many feel as though they don't need God. That I'm my own man. What do I need him for? The truth of the matter is you need him. We all need him. Are you hearing me? But until you humble yourself, because see, God resists the proud but give grace to the humble. And, 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 and men have to humble themselves. See, that was, that was Lucifer's downfall. He wanted to exalt his throne above the throne of God. To elevate himself above God, he felt as though he didn't need God. Let me tell you something. The creature is not greater than the creator. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Then let's read on. Look at verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was what? Dried up. And this is dealing with the preparations for the coming battle of Armageddon. And it says that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared, which is going to no doubt include a, a, a number of countries that are involved in that, probably China, Japan, plus, plus some others, which is going to where the battle of Armageddon is going to culminate at. Then verse 13, and I saw three unclean spirits, what? Like frogs. And notice this is, this is inserted between the six and the seven vials. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. And, and while, you know, and John saw these demon spirits in, in this vision, they will be invisible to others. Are you hearing me? They will be invisible to others. He says, and I saw three unclean spirits like or the appearance of frogs. They, they're going to be invisible in their functioning as their things are being done on earth. And keep in mind, all of this that's going to be going on 
It's going to be, listen, no doubt, it will probably be televised, satellite, whatever means. Are you hearing me? This, this, this matter, this situation will no doubt be televised throughout. Are you hearing me? My God. And he says, come out of, listen, come out of the mouth of the dragon. Mm -mm -mm. Come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophets. This, this trio, this ungodly trio, it, no doubt is going to uh, try to ascertain and will ascertain the help of other nations who will no doubt join in. And it says, for they are the spirits of devils. Referring to a, a, a flood of demon spirits that is going to be working in conjunction with these unclean spirits. Listen, work, listen. For they are the spirits of devils, what? Working miracles, which is no doubt will be done through the false prophet. Are you hearing me? As well as others, which go forth unto the kings of the earth. Hear this which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. My God. So there are going to be nations that the Antichrist, which he does not control, but will seek help and no doubt will get help in his plan. Mm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And so he's going to think to destroy Israel. But he will not be successful in his task of doing so. Look at verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. This is referring to the second advent when Christ comes. Listen with his church. This is referring to the second advent when it seems like Israel is going to be totally annihilated. Then the second, listen, the second coming, which is referred to as the second advent. Then Christ, listen, shows on the scene. And, 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 and hear this. He says, blesses he who watches and keeps his garments. Wow. Wow. Lest he walk naked and they see his shames. In other words, it, this is pointing to those who, who, are, who are on earth and worship and serve the lamb, but they, they must constantly be vigilant. And let me say this. Even now we must be vigilant. We, we know the, the rapture is going to be the next big event that will take place. But listen, let me, let me say this. Let me insert this in here. There are so many people who think they have so much time. Let me tell you something. Tomorrow is not promised to you. People are leaving here every day. The, ra the rapture is imminent. We know it could take place a month from now, 10 months from now, even 10 years from now. As I've, I've, I've stated, I, and this is, just, this is just my personal opinion, I believe, I believe the rapture of the church will take place during my lifetime. I, I just believe that, listen, I believe I'm, I'm, I'm going to be taken out of here by the upper taker before the undertaker. Okay? I, that's me. All right? Don't, don't, don't frown. Don't, don't look at me cross-eyed and cock-eyed. That's just a belief that I have. Are you hearing me? I believe that I'll be out of here by the upper taker before the undertaker. So I just believe that the Lord, the rapture of the church will take place in my lifetime. Again, we know it's imminent. It can take place at any time. But guess what? It can be another 20 years from now. I don't know. But what I do want you to know, what I do want you to know is that do you know? Do you know that you know that you are saved? Do you know that you know huh? that if, if death was to visit your ranks today, tomorrow, where would you spend eternity? Because the Bible simply lets us know it is appointed unto a man once to die and after that the judgment. Whether you want to or not, listen, death going to invade your ranks. And I want to admonish you and encourage you. Be sure that you are ready. Are you hearing me? Be sure that you're ready. Listen, um, listen, 
I'm out of time, but not out of word. I trust and pray that you're gleaning something from this. Again, I want to encourage you to share it with someone else. If you've not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Continue to follow with us. Continue to be with us each and every Wednesday night. Should the Lord tarry. Glory to God. And it is my prayer that your spiritual eyes would be open to behold some of the things that we're teaching out of this word. Glory to God. And again, don't be afraid to read the book of Revelation. It is the one book that God pronounces a blessing upon those who will read and hear and do the words of this book. Glory to God. So I want to encourage you, start studying the book. And if you would like to, listen, if you would like to be with us in one of our live service, we welcome you to come. Glory to God. We still adhere to the CDC guidelines. Praise God. And I know in, you know, in certain areas and regions, things are beginning to lift to some degree. But let me tell you something. COVID hadn't gone anywhere. And you still have to exercise the wisdom of God in the process. Are you hearing me? You still have to exercise the wisdom of God in the process. What am I saying? I'm saying don't live in fear, but live in respect of it. Are you with me? Don't live in fear of it, but live in respect of it. In other words, you do the possible. God does the impossible. Praise God. Trust and pray that you receive something on tonight. Listen, we love you. Uh, continue to, to, to tune in with us. Again, if you've not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Continue to follow with us and share it with someone else. And let us, we welcome your comments. Praise God. This is Bishop Walker here in the sanctuary of SRC on another Bible study night. Until next time, we love you in Jesus and be blessed.